Let's take a quick look at uh, a couple of concepts that I think some students struggle with when we're looking at a facility layout. Um, and, and, and let's just, uh, let's just jump into this. Uh, let's assume that we have a, an assembly line where we have three tasks that need to get accomplished. Uh, task A takes uh, 0.3 minutes. Task B takes half of a minute. Task C takes 0.2 minutes. So from an assembly line standpoint, what we have is if we just took and put one person at station A and let them do their work, a person at uh, station B let them do their work, and a person at station C let them do their work, and we can't allow things to back up or stack up or move ahead. So basically whenever person A finishes, the other per person that's doing task A finishes their job, they hand it over to person B, person B does their task to it, whenever they finish they hand it off to, to person C. So those are things that are going on. Concepts that are popping up here though for us are, um, as we look at it, I want to talk about the concept of a bottleneck. Uh, bottleneck is where things get stopped, where they, where they get backed up. So in this process, you can identify the bottleneck by the step that, had, that takes the longest amount of time. So, and you can see this, you know, nobody in this group of three people can move faster than uh, the person that's doing task B. It takes a half minute to do it. This is the bottleneck, okay? This is the bottleneck. You cannot do this process faster than 0 0.5 minutes the way that it's set. So at steady state, what we have is we have one unit that will start and move through and it will take on average 0 0.5 minutes for a unit to get through there, okay? Person one will take and do their step, hand it off to person B. It takes them half of a minute to do their step while they're working on their piece though, person A has reached over, they've grabbed one, they've started working, and then they hand it off to C. C works on it, as C works on theirs, B gets their part from A, and you can see we just get this steady state of the flow. So identify the bottleneck, this is the one that has the longest amount of time. Because of that, we have two other things that do pop up. Um, for the person that's doing step A, they finish their task in 0.3 minutes, okay? That means that in a steady state flow, it takes the person doing step B a half of a minute. So whenever person A finishes their task, they're just waiting before they can hand it off to, to the person that's doing uh, step B, right? They're, they're waiting, it takes 0.5 here, it only takes them 0.3. So they're waiting 0.2 minutes. We call that a flow blocking delay, okay? The flow is blocked because of something that's going on. Similarly, what happens is whenever the person that's doing task B, whenever they finish their work, they hand it off to the person that's doing uh, step C. Well, step C is gonna finish their work in 0.2 minutes. They're gonna put it over in the finished pile and then they have to wait 0.3 minutes before they can get the next item that's being worked here. We call that a lack of work delay, right? They hand it off and then they just sit there and they wait. So from this standpoint, those are two things that are, that are going on um, that we need to think about. Identify where your bottleneck is. Identify the steps that may be flow blocked. Identify those steps that may be waiting for uh, work, for a lack of work delay. Now let's do a real quick talk about uh, productivity. Uh, when we're looking back at this three-step function, right now, as I mentioned, you can't move faster than the bottleneck, right? You can't move faster than it unless you put more people in this area, all right? In this case, it's going to take us 0.5 minutes. If we are using three people, one for this station, one for this station, one for this station, that means that every 0.5 minutes, we will produce one unit. All right, so from a productivity standpoint, productivity is our output, one unit, divided by our input. And our input in this case is, it's gonna take us a half minute and three people. So our overall productivity really is one unit per every one and a half people minutes. 
we can fix this. We can improve this. As a matter of fact, look at this, op uh, at this option. Let's try to do it with two people. Let's let the first person do step A, hand it off to person two who does step B, who hands it back over to person one who will do step C. So person one is going to do this step and that step. Person two is just going to do this step. So it's going to take person one 0.3 minutes plus 0.5 minutes, which is half of a minute. Okay, so what we're about to do is we've gone down to two people because person one is going to do this step and this step. We still get one unit that's being done every 0.5 minutes. However, now we get the one unit every half minute, but we're only using two people. So we're getting one unit per one people minutes. Okay, and I know that that's kind of an odd uh, unit that we're using in the denominator, but uh, you get the concept on how that's going on. If you were given a question and asked what would happen to productivity if you rearrange the overall order, what you would need to do is calculate the productivity for the first way you're going to do it, okay, which was before when we had one person each, then calculate the productivity in the second way that you would do it, calculate the productivity the third way you would do it, and then go back and just compare the productivity that you would get from each one of those methods to determine which one would be the, uh, uh, the best as far as productivity goes. I hope this helps. Thank you.